I, I believe it's having the ability to uh, get people to right. follow you or to do what you would like them to do. Okay. Using your words or using your communication is not always just words. Hey, what's up, folks? Grandison Shines here with Siduri International, and welcome to today's conversation regarding influential communication. And with me, I have to my left, Miss Yasmin Murray. Yasmin Hello, Murray. Uh, Yasmin Murray. Yes. And over here, I have Mr. Yeah. Al Gleason, the curator of nonsense. Curator of nonsense. Yes, awesome, awesome, awesome. So, folks, today, again, influential communication. This is a topic that I am very emphatic about. And I feel that if you are a leader, if you are an entrepreneur, and we're going to be talking about it from all those different perspectives, even if you are a, a career professional, influencer communication is something that you should aspire to learn how to do. Any position, or even a parent, let me put that out there. If you're a parent, being influential with your children and other parents that you're working with, whatever leader, you're, whatever capacity in which you're a leader, from the home ecosystem to the work environment ecosystem, influential communication is important. So let's talk about it in depth now. So Yasmin, coming to you first, ladies first. Influential communication. You know, I want to read the definition of influential communication. Okay. So everybody Go ahead and read the definition. Is. Okay, so the definition is persuasion and influence as a competency is the ability to convince others to support an idea, agenda, or direction. Sometimes we refer to it as strategic influence. Okay. That says it all. So what does that mean to you? It means to me having the power of words to influence others so they follow you. Okay, all right, all right. I and like you, that sir? Definition. Uh, mine would be similar. I, I believe it's having the ability to uh, get people to right. follow you or to do what you would like them to do. Okay. Using your words or using your communication is not always just words. Mm -hmm. True. It could True. be we like to dress a certain way. Right. Mm -hmm. That influences the environment that we're in. This is true. The Very way true. you talk. You know, you're in an environment where somebody uses a lot of profanity, then it makes it okay for a lot of people to use profanity. Right. If you use none, people automatically feel guilty about using it a lot of times. So I think, it's, I think that's what it is in a nutshell. It's all communication, but having the ability to get people to do what you want them to do uh, through your communication. Awesome, awesome. There's a term that I used to hear more so when I was younger called... Silver tongue. You ever heard yeah, of that? Silver tongue. Being yes. silver tongue or golden tongue. Silver yeah. tongue, golden tongue. I I feel I like that term only because and I and I liken it, well, it's actually different from being kind of like the snake oil salesman to me. Right. Both of those people are very, very slick in their conversation. The yes. used car salesman, right? right. So, and people walk away with cars that they didn't really mean to buy because of right. this influential communication, right? Yes. I've heard it all the time. I used to work at a car lot, so I know. Yes. So golden tongue or silver tongue, I like the term because it really gives this, to me, it paints the, the idea of someone who's a very strong orator. Mm -hmm. And being an orator, and we speak a lot, you're a speaker, you're a speaker, we're always speaking on stage, host events and everything else, it's really important for us to know how to be, quote, silver tongue, but not in a manipulative way. Correct. So when you hear the term silver tongue, what comes to mind for you? Well, it, it comes, what comes to mind is embellishment like silver shines words that embellish okay. that that shine that attract other people sure okay it's more of attracting other people to do what you want them to do right we're, we're definitely you? attracted to shiny things right so shiny object syndrome <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> i know i am squirrel right. squirrel <laughs> that was right there yes i think i guess to, to add to that sometimes embellish has a negative uh, connotation I think right so I would say embellish but in a positive way maybe it is it is being clear about the benefits mm -hmm. of, a, of a particular situation or circumstance sure. so that people understand it you know it's a trend now in marketing right you give a bullet point for every little thing 
that you possibly can to embellish mm -hmm. all the benefits sure. <laughs> you know that are there so I, I think that's 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 what it is being able to um, you know somebody who has that ability to sell you on the benefits of right. whatever they're trying to get you to do. Sell on the benefits. We'll talk about that because we have a seven step process that actually is one of the steps of the seven steps. Selling the benefits, always selling the benefits. Yes. Yasmin, when, we, when it comes to influencer communication mm -hmm. and when it comes to manipulating, what's, the, what's a, a difference to you that you can explain to our audience? Manipulation is when it benefits you. Okay. And what was the first part of the question? Like, what, what's the difference between, basically, well, what, why was it different between influential communication yeah, and influencing is to have, the, have them do something that benefits the humanity. That's, that's what, you know, I think, and also themselves. Manipulation is when it only benefits the person. That's manipulating. Okay. Yeah. I think... I think manipulation is another one of those words that has negative connotations, right? Sure. So with that in mind, I would say uh, influencing people definitely is it's a way to get people to act in truth and honesty, using truth and honesty right. and being uh, upright, even though that can be, you know, it's not always the case, but at least it's always presented that way. Right. Where manipulation, a lot of times it deals with deception. It deals with... Uh, taking advantage of people. Right. So, influence definitely is, is positive, benefits all, versus manipulation. You know, you're taking advantage of people. Yeah, yeah. I I think that I like both of your de your definitions regarding that. I think manipulation, you start playing these head games with people to yes. try to get them to do something that, is, again, like you said, is going to solely benefit me. I'm going to manipulate this person to do this because I want this. Mm -hmm. It's yes. all about that person instead of, or me mm -hmm. instead of the other person. It being the mutual benefit. So I, when I think of influential communication and we're talking to people, let's say whoever is on the stage and they're talking to people regarding their product or service. They did a speech and now they're starting to sell. And then I've heard people say, oh, he's gonna, here he comes to sales and he's going to manipulate us into buying his product. Well, yeah. more influence because you don't want, you don't have to buy it. But two, if you do get it, it's most likely going to be beneficial for you right. or the person who's buying the purchaser. And it's going to be beneficial for the person who's selling it as well from a financial standpoint. Mm -hmm. But also he gets his message out there and he gets to help somebody. So I think influence for me is definitely the difference of the the intent behind yes. the conversation yeah. the intent behind the conversation so that being said folks remember to go to our youtube channel if you're watching it somewhere else go to youtube.com forward slash the Dirt international if you're watching it right here on the channel click the subscribe button make sure you hit the notification also so you can get the notifications when we upload new videos we do a live broadcast every Wednesday and we also post every Friday so that being said let's dive into the conversation about the process yes. first step of the process now folks we have again seven steps first step of the process is create rapport mm -hmm. so talk to us about creating rapport what's the nuances of that First of all, you're meeting a total stranger. If you want to influence them, you've got to get to know them. Okay. You now get to know. What them. if it, well, talk, well, what if it's about those people who are in an office environment and it's not a stranger? Does it still apply? Of course. Okay. Of course. The more relationship building there is, the more apt they are to do things for you because they like you. People, we've talked about that. Work for people they like and trust. You have to earn their trust and they have to like you in order for them to be influenced by you. Okay. Or to accept you as a leader, so whatever you say, they will do, but if somebody doesn't like you, you haven't built rapport, you hardly know them. Sure. You know, why would they even, I mean, take example of the po of politics right now. People, some people might get swayed by what is influencing them, but a lot of them are digging into you know what does this person stand for who is this person why do all these you know politicians go on road trips to shake hands to pat them on the back hey it's just kind of creating that <laughs> Build rapport. building rapport yeah. yes so what's important for you when you're building rapport with someone i think i think the most important thing is to understand that person because the the better you understand that person mm -hmm the more effective you can be with how you influence them. Okay. 
knowing what will influence them. Right. Knowing yeah. if they or somebody you should even try to influence. <laughs> you know, those types of things. Yeah. And that takes conversation. conversation. It takes verbal conversation. Yes. So you folks who are not so privy to converse openly as you should. This is a skill set that I challenge you to learn to step out of the, get a bit more confidence, step out of the shyness and start utilizing the rapport building techniques, asking questions about the other person, opening the questions so they can talk. People like talking about themselves, what we yes. found, right? And so yes. asking a question that is open-ended gets them to talk more, elaborate, expound on some conversations or specifically the question that you ask them and then they will have the, you'll have the opportunity to take those mental notes and start developing rapport. So what are some of the things that you do that you pay attention to when you're, you have something else you want to say? You raise yes, your hand. Well, <laughs> I, was, I wanted to add something else. I don't know how many of you go networking, and that's really, really important in networking. Have you noticed people will just walk around, hi, I'm so-and-so, here's my business card. I don't even know you. What am I going to do with your business card? Guess where it's going? In the trash. Unless I know you, you get to know me, I'm not going to give you any business or even expect any from you. Okay. So. Yeah. All right. Your question was? <laughs> I forgot it now, but that's a good point. Good point. Yeah, to me, it's important that you build rapport with me. If you're doing business with me, I want to get to know you first. Okay. Step number two, we spoke about a couple of videos back. Listening. Active listening. Active or listening. listening. Is it active listening or is it partially listening? What say you? I'll say active listening. That's active crucial. Listening. You need to be engaged. Mm -hmm. You need to be in the moment. You need to be paying attention to what the person in front of you is saying so that you can build that rapport. What did you they say? They were always, what did you say? see, <laughs> that is an example of not active listening. Yes. She would not get right. my, as a matter of fact, I'm not even gonna pay attention to her. I'm just gonna look at you. <laughs> right. So what are some of yes. the points we can give the audience about actively listening? How do we show that? How do we demonstrate that? Well, being present. So just for yourself, you need to shut everything else out, almost like no one else is, no one else is in the room mm -hmm. other than the person that you're engaging with. Repeating what they say, ask questions to verify what they said mm -hmm. is a good way. Right. Mirroring is another technique good that technique. you can do. If somebody changes their stance, you change your stance to, to mirror that. Right. So those are two, two big ways, I would say. Nodding your head. What about you? Nodding, Nodding your head. head. Yes. Okay. Making eye contact. Yes. Okay. Smiling at them. Yes. Right, right. All of that. Now, I've been there. There have been times when someone's just kind of talking, and I know that I was kind of doing those things, but my mind was like somewhere else. So, folks, if when that happens, make sure you reel it back in. You got to have self-control self -control. over the imagination and the mind during that time because sometimes people can just elaborate and start talking and it's like, and you're thinking, what is this person talking about? And I need to go. And your mind starts going, so floating off somewhere else. I've been there, done that. You ever done that before? No, uh, yes, yeah. no, yeah, no, 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 oh, okay, I I'm have, about to film something else. I've sorry. never done that. That's manipulation. Yeah, no, God, no, I have done it, and you know, when I feel like somebody else is doing it to me, right, uh -huh. I'll say, so what do you think? And that drinks, drinks like, oh, uh, oh. Could you repeat that, please? <laughs> <laughs> have you done that before? Absolutely. Drifted, yeah. I have absolutely drifted. I think it's something that, depending on where yes. you are, if you're tired, right, if it's something that's someone that's boring, right, or yeah. a product or service you have no interest in, sure, yeah. sure, and you're trying to be nice but you don't want to just be like ah, I don't care about what you have to say, right. Uh, <laughs> so I think all those those factors play into your ability to have self control, right. and stay focused on what somebody's saying. But I found what a what a great way to stop that monotony to get back engaged is to <laughs> ask a legitimate question that you want to know an answer to. Sure. So we talk about being, being able to be, uh, get shallow and, and broad in our conversation, right? Have, mm -hmm. a, have a general understanding of a lot of things right. so that in those situations you can ask an intelligent question. You can say something that would tie back to something that is of interest of you, sure. kind of bring that conversation in a way where it's beneficial and you can truly establish rapport. Because one of the things that I don't, I don't think we realize is when you are like that, People know that you're like that. They can tell when they've lost you. They may not know what to say or how mm -hmm. to bring it back in, but mm -hmm. they know you're not paying them any yeah, attention. Like lace <laughs> wise, right? right? Right. And so 
you know, if there's somebody you want to influence later or that you need, like, they're going to remember the first time we were talking, you weren't even really paying me attention. Sure. You know? Yeah. So, sure so. <laughs> yeah. so I always like to ask a question that ties to something that I care about. Right. Uh, that relates to what they're talking about. Right. And that is part of the influencing. That's yeah. the right question. And we talk, also talk about the observation skills, one of our 43 different leadership skills, observation skills. So I know when I'm giving a talk, it's harder now still to do this online, but when I'm giving a talk and I have people in front of us, when we're training our clients and we're coaching our clients, we, you have to observe where their mindset is. Because there are times when they'll drift off and you can see it in their eyes, especially when we're training. You got 10 people or 20 people in the room and you're talking about something that they may feel they know, right? There's a myriad of reasons, variety of reasons why they can drift off. So we have to notice then this person's drifting off, right. this person's drifting off, and bring the conversation back, use, utilize nonverbal communication techniques like paralinguistics to wake them up if we have to, right? right. Turn the AC down, do whatever we need to do, right? right? And make sure, so observation comes into play. So have you had to utilize your observation skills in this whole opportunity to build and report? Absolutely, something what you said, that if they're dr drifting and if you have the ability to walk closer to them, right. walk Proximix, right behind huh? them, Proximix. or next to them, mm -hmm. and you know, continue the conversation that really wakes them up or says, okay, he's paying attention to right. me. Right. Absolutely. What have you used as a technique to do them again besides? Yeah. Go ahead. Well, I would do the same thing that Yasmin does, but I like to clap my hands behind them. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> Hello. startle them. No, um, I think a great way to get somebody re-engaged is to ask a question. Yeah. So if you are the orator or the presenter, and you see people are kind of waning, ask questions. Ask them a specific question. Yeah. Oh, sure. Joe, how do you feel about that? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that type of thing. Call their name out. People love, I mean, you wake people up, drink the slack out of their chain real quick by calling their name. Absolutely. Boo. And that's also a great way to build rapport. Sure. We didn't kind of touch on that part Absolutely. yet. But calling people by their name, we all love to hear our name. Mm -hmm. I think there's a couple songs out there where people say, say my name. Say my name. Say yes. My name. <laughs> we love to hear our name. That so. is true. So we have, uh, we're, we were talking about asking the right questions, which is like we've been talking about this all the time, even in the, in the report building stage. Mm -hmm. We have listening stage asking the right questions to make sure. Then we have making sure we emphasize ask the right questions. Yes. Some questions may not be as sage as some others. They may not come up with the sagacity because they're not in, in, in line. So having intelligent, poignant questions, mm -hmm. what, what do you say about that? Absolutely. If somebody is having a conversation, I would take notes mm -hmm. of the questions that I can ask right. or have questions ready so you can ask the right questions that are related to that field. Mm -hmm. okay. So you, you do that while you're in the conversation, like on the back of a business it's card fun, or something? Or yeah, what, what's on the, the back of a yeah. business card, absolutely. That you know, what, what was of interest to them or right. just little notes, yeah. Mm -hmm. I have never done that in life. Really? <laughs> <laughs> information on a business card? No, I well, take notes there. right there while I'm talking to them. I mean, I know it can okay. be effective. I just... Yeah, I mean, if I... And I'll let them know, hey, do you mind if I'm going to take a few notes? Right. Yeah. So they know, otherwise yeah. they'll think, you know, she's just, you know, doing her own thing. But I always let them know, hey, do you mind if I take a few notes? Because right. I forget things. Right. Yeah. No, that's, that's a great way to do that. Yeah. I always try to remember. Now, after the conversation, I might go in the corner and jot down some notes sure. from, the, from the conversation. But I typically use self-control and activate uh, my active listening so that I'm getting the major details, right, so that yeah. I can ask an intelligent question. Mm -hmm. I know for me in a conversation, it's difficult for me to be engaged in that conversation and take notes at the same time. So I just try to rely on that active listening, active listening make sure I'm paying attention yep. so that I can, you know, remember what they're saying sure. and ask a question from that. And all that goes into our next step of the process of being mindful of your body language. Mm. Now, people don't understand how important body language is when you are communicating, when I spoke about this on Wednesday, I was taught, I told, I gave everyone, I said, go try this out. This, here's a social experiment. <laughs> And I told them next time, talk to someone with your take notice with your shoulders square off, and then while the other then when they, that's when they're talking, and then when they're talking again, 
turning and see how long the duration of the conversation lasts as far as them making their point. I've noticed that in experimenting with this, that when body language, we square off, and then we'll talk about the importance of body language. Yeah. Square off, they could, they'll elaborate a longer period of time about that specific thing that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. But then if you turn a little bit, the shoulders are not square, you turn your head a little bit, then they'll give you shorter answers because they're seeing, they're seeing that you're not interested. Mm -hmm. It's an automatic thing that we do. And so yeah. play around with Absolutely. that, folks. Get an understand how to, understanding of how to utilize that. So body language. Yes. Important, not important. What should listeners be paying attention to when they are listening? I don't remember the exact statistic, but 70, 80, 90 percent. Actually, I think different people say yeah, different things. Exactly. Uh, but we'll say 70, 70 to 90 percent of all communication is nonverbal. Nonverbal, yeah. Body language is a big part of that yep. when you are engaging with somebody. Sure. And some of the simple examples you think about, I don't know, maybe talking to your kids, for those of you who have kids, you know, if they're slouched down, or if you, if you go somewhere, right. you can go out. You're not talking to, to, a, to the person, but you see if they're slouched versus sitting upright, or, uh, you know, if they look worried or stressed. No one's exchanged any words, yeah. but the body is communicating loudly, it's screaming. I don't feel good, or I lack confidence, or I don't want to be here. Those types of things. Uh, don't talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> don't talk Sometimes to me. Sometimes people are so close, you know. So I, I believe that non or body language is one of the forms of communication that hit people that they receive before you even open your mouth. It's, it's right. one of them. Appearance is one. Body language is probably second, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's so it's critical. It could it could ruin your chances to be able to influence people before you even open your mouth. Very true. Very true. Absolutely, I love that. What do you say about body language? So something the body language what comes to mind. I know there have been instances where earlier on in my career, if there was something I wanted to say to my boss or ask my boss who's busy doing something else, and as I got coached. I realized that there are certain things you have to do to have other people pay attention to you. Number one, set a time. Do you mind? Do you have 10 minutes for me? What is a good time for me to talk to you because there's something that I need to, to talk to you, have a conversation about? And once you do that and you're having that conversation, when you walk in, well, thank, thank you for your time, and you sit down. If they're still busy on the computer, you know, kind of gently, do you mind? you know this was our time could you please give me one-on-one -on -one attention because mm -hmm. this is important to me Great. make sure you bring it to their attention how important this conversation is that you're about to have Great. sometimes you just have to demand it even in, in seminars or webinars you know we always say hey turn your phones off make sure there's no distractions you are still trying to tell them hey what I'm about to say is important so shut everything else out um, out and just listen to me pay attention If you need to take notes do so because I know for me writing notes it's important because that's how I remember so that's how you influence people is by making them realize that what what you're saying is important mm -hmm. and they need to pay attention mm -hmm. okay yeah I, I, I like that and body language is again like Al said 70, 90 percent, depending on the study you read, it's, it's very high. It's, all of them that I've read are over 50 percent. I've been yeah. over 70 percent, as a matter yes. of fact. I've been over 70 percent. 70 percent uh, higher, like I was talking about. And to your point, making sure that you utilize certain gestures in order to capture someone's attention. So facial expressions, when you're talking to someone, when I'm talking to someone, there are times when I have to be mindful of my facial expression because they may say something and we have these little micro expressions that show up really quickly. And when someone's talking and you have this expression that comes upon your face, they'll see, if they're looking at you in your eye, they'll see that and they may see that you're thrown off about what they just said. Therefore, you stop the rapport building process. Now that they're thinking, okay, this person doesn't believe me, or, or if you're sitting there and you got your lips turned while you're talking, right. you're like this, they're like, whoa, wait, 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 why are you doing? That's not a rapport building technique. So smiling, utilizing your facial expression like that, nodding the head to gestures, mm -hmm. body language, of course, making yes. sure it's pointed towards them and not, uh, uh, not angled away. The appearance sets the tone. You set the tone, or you can and should set the tone with your body language before 
you start the, being influential. And then when you're in the process of talking and collaborating and expounding on different to technique or topics and just going deep into the conversation, then it's all about paying attention to what you're going to doing. And all of this should gel together with the verbal communication, with your confidence, with the nonverbal communication. Next step in the process is selling the benefits. Mm -hmm. Now, when I think of selling the benefits, whatever the subject matter is, mm -hmm. it always has benefits. And then for us to be influential, we can align ourselves. When I say ourselves, if I can align the person and myself align with the benefits, then that helps me to gather or to generate the rapport, develop the rapport even more so. What do you think about the selling benefits aspect? What can you say to our audience? Absolutely. We, we talk about the active listening, for mm -hmm. an example. When you are going to sell benefits, that's when that active listening you know, will be helpful, yeah, uh, really sure, critical. Sure. If you are, uh, if, if there's an individual that's 90 years old, uh, they are wheelchair bound, and I'm trying to sell them on the latest um, you know, basketball shoes, these latest you know, the <laughs> super, they make you jump high, you know, you're, it'll increase your game. <laughs> No matter what benefits yeah. I offer, it's not going to be beneficial to that individual. And so that was extreme. I don't know why that, where that came from. But, <laughs> but the point being, if I'm not listening, if I'm not paying attention to who I am engaging with, right. then the benefits that I'm selling or presenting might not even be benefits at all. That's not going to move that person. Sure. Uh, but if I can listen, if I know that, uh, you know, if I remember what the situation is, then I can speak to benefits that apply to that individual person that, that I'm engaging with. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So you have to what have the say? right audience, like you said. You have to have the right audience to sell whatever it is that you're selling. Well, or, well know who the audience is, mm -hmm. you know, because if that same, in that terrible example I just used, <laughs> if I'm talking about uh, how the shoe increases blood flow and it's comfortable to be on your feet, well, now right. that's something that's a benefit. It's right. the same shoe, same shoe, but I'm recognizing who I'm, I'm yes. talking to mm -hmm. and what benefit they need to hear, right. what benefit will be beneficial to them. Mm -hmm. Sure. So I don't, I don't know that the audience is, there are times where you have the wrong audience, but a lot of times, I would maybe say majority of the times, if you just know who you're talking to, then you can tell them or talk to them about the benefits that will be beneficial to sure. them. Sure. And like you said, you just gave a great example. You can all, always transform the benefits to the advantage of the person. Same shoe, yes. but it's advantageous to both the athlete and the person who's in the wheelchair yes. because it helps with the blood circulation. Right. Right. Okay. Next point in the process, folks, is definitive speech, being definite in your speech, not wavering. Mm -hmm. I feel that, first of all, you have to have a high level of confidence in order to just talk from a definite concrete standpoint. So if you don't have your confidence up and you're and especially if you don't have a confidence about that subject matter that you're about to talk to them about, then you're going to waver. You're not going to utilize definitive speech. So when we talk about definitive speech, what do you feel is important there for our audience to understand? I'll give you an example of one of my kids. If I ask them, hey, put the trash out, would you, it's trash day tomorrow, I might get to it, is the response. What does that mean? Are you going to do it? Are you not? Are we mm -hmm. going to miss the window of opportunity? So it's important to me that you give me, okay, I'm going to do it right now. I'll have it done by 2 o'clock, or I'm going to have it done by this evening at 8 o'clock. I need to know when you're going to have it done. Right. Otherwise, I can do it myself. So, you know, right, yeah, exactly. Def definite answers to me are so important. Okay. What do you say? I, I would echo that. I think it's, as a leader, it's critical that you have definitive speech. In Yasmin's example, if you flip it around, you're asking somebody, you need somebody to, to perform a task, and you say, could you maybe, please, if you get a chance to get that done? Right. Or get something like that done? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Or people are listening to you, they don't know exactly what to do. There's no, there's no urgency with it. There's sure. no clarity. 
and instead of using their imagination to try to figure out what you really wanted and if it's important, they'll just move on to something else and you won't, you won't get things done. You won't be influ influential. Yeah. Definitive speech, if you're utilizing low, what we call low power words, I can probably, maybe, perhaps, let's see if those, that, that's very, very low power. Yes. When you are developing a relationship, been influential in your communication, no matter what it is, if you're a speaker on the stage or if you're coaching or whatever it may be. And I always try to make, oh, they always try. Nope. Wow. I always make sure <laughs> that I, exactly right. I always make sure that I pay attention to that type of speech when I am yes. coaching and especially when I'm speaking. Mm -hmm. Because Absolutely. it's people want to hear and, and develop a trusting relationship with you and credibility when you are more emphatic about your answers or when you're more definite about your answers. Right. Giving concrete, definite answers, not, uh, maybe I can probably get to that. Right. It's, uh, leaders, like you're saying, leaders, no, there's no room for that. Well, especially right now in politics, you know, we've got the candidates. Maybe I will help with the health care. Yeah. Maybe I will cut the taxes. Yes. You've yeah, never heard that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I will, they say, I will cut the taxes. I will do this as definite sure. speech. That gives people the confidence that, you know what, this is the right candidate. This is the right leader I want to follow. Yep. And, and you know what's fascinating to me about that? When you look at the presidency, there are so <laughs> many things that they're responsible for, but they don't have direct control over. Sure. But they still speak definitively. They tell you, this is what we are going to do. They don't tell you if the House gets it passed, if it makes it through the Senate. <laughs> they don't tell you all of that Even stuff. That's it's going to be shot happen, down. Right? It's a part of the process. When they're talking, I'm going to get it done. Yeah. Right. And they arguably could be the perfect people to say, well, if I can get all the support I need. True. Yeah. And Very they true. never do that. They can't. Right. They can't. Yeah. And then you think about the average person, or maybe the average leader, who has control, right. or she has control to get things done, and they won't definitively say, I'm going to do this. So I think uh, it was best said by the master of the force, Yoda, who said, <laughs> do or do not. There is no try. And that's something yeah. I live by. It really is applicable in, in every area, really. Yeah. Sure. No, that's, I like those words of Master Yoda. That's yes. awesome. That's awesome. Final stage, folks, is making sure that you invest time. Invest time. I am under the impression that the more time you have, the more you should be able to influence the person or people who you're talking to regarding that particular thing. And if that be the subject matter, if that be true, then all things being equal, longer term relationship should equal more influence, right? Should. Should. But maybe right. could is a better way to say could? it. Okay. Could. Okay, explain that. Well, I think all the steps in the process are important. Mm -hmm. If you operate in those, then your influence will grow over time, the longer the relationship is established. Mm -hmm. If you don't operate in those, your influence could actually diminish over sure. time. If I know you so, to be someone who never follows through on what they say, they're unsure, they don't communicate, communicate clearly, mm. then my, your ability to influence me, to get me to do something that you're asking me to do, goes down. We call it, you know, in layman's terms, that person is flaky. Right. <laughs> right? Yeah. Why am I going to, I'll show, I've shown up two times and they didn't show up. Yeah. I'm not doing that again. Hey, yeah. can you please meet me? Uh, no. <laughs> So I think if you're operating in the principles appropriately, your influence will grow tremendously over time. Yeah. But if you're not effectively operating in the principles, you will lose influence. They actually, give you more. You have more influence when you first met them right. than you do over time mm -hmm. when you don't follow through and operate in those principles. And that's powerful what you said because I firmly believe, and we're going to do a video on this, folks. So stay tuned. Mm -hmm. We'll let you know when yeah. that how you communicate creates and or affects your reputation. Yes. You, you will be known for, you said. Absolutely. That's your reputation. Based on what you say, what you do, that creates your reputation. So going back to the invest time, thank you for that. Going back to the invest time, what do you feel about investing the time, the longer duration, more influence, could be, should be, what do you think? Yeah, longer duration, definitely. 
I mean, in every aspect of, of um, our lives, mm -hmm. whether uh, if you're recruiting someone or you're soliciting business to business relationship, right. even when you're dating, you know, you can't, uh, I, I know it could be, you know, the one night and you say, well, this is the person I want to be with and then it bombs. But to me, just kind of nurturing that relationship before you develop some expectations from that person mm -hmm. and then bring that person into your life. Um, that's how I operate. I mean, every time I've recruited someone for my business or uh, in a relationship, it's it's cultivating your your um, principles, sure. right? like um, Al said, and operating with with those principles. Right. That, you know, does that person have the same values? Right. So definitely. Okay, I, I like that. I like that. One, th one question I thought about while you were talking was: Do you need? the authority in order to have the influence and how do they differ do you need to have the authority in order to have the influence like for instance if i'm a parent i should have influence over my kid especially as they're growing up should because some parents don't i feel as you're growing up you're establishing values in them they're learning things what to do what not to do ultimately and if you're influencing them the right way, they should follow your leadership. Mm -hmm. Same thing in a workplace environment opportunity, grooming a person and or raising up a person in that particular department or whatever, you have that relationship. Now the boss has the authority, the parent has the authority. Yes. Let's say you come into an environment, networking, speech you're about to deliver yes. and you come do you have is the authority factor then prevalent and if so how much and does it really matter okay. what do you think well when you say when you say the authority mm -hmm. do you mean a position that's is that what you mean like either way is, either way either okay. way yep well either way for me I, I would say the short answer is no you don't have to have any given authority right People have given authority and still are disrespected. You know, they're not influential because yep. of some of the things we talked about sure. before. Steve Jobs said the most influential person on the planet, the most powerful person on the planet is the storyteller because they speak with conviction, they set the tone, they cast the vision. Mm -hmm. And so with that in mind, you can walk into a room and have conviction speak with clarity and conciseness and you know some of the the C's of communication that we talk about and automatically get influence it doesn't yeah. matter what authority was was given right when you're confident and know who you are you walk into a room you automatically have influence we talk about the nonverbal communication I like that I like that if you're if you are <clears throat> dressed a certain way there's a certain amount of respect that's given to you. Right. And uh, we, all, we all dress well, so we've all experienced this. But you could be in you know, shorts and a t-shirt and people don't pay you attention. Then you have on a, a suit and tie and you know, a handkerchief. Right. People, they, they, they perceive you as somebody mm -hmm. in a position of authority, right. yep. whether you are or not. Yeah. And they give you a certain amount of respect. They give you a certain level of courtesy that wouldn't necessarily be given to you in the same situation if you weren't dressed appropriately. Right. So, mm -hmm. so the, the nonverbal and the verbal communication <clears throat> is, is critical in that situation, uh, but also being able to speak with authority, speak with definiteness, those types of things, they, they command attention, they command authority, whether it was given to you or not. Well, I like that. There's another I point I want to make is that I totally agree that you don't have to be a person of authority, authority mm -hmm. to influence people for example if you're an expert in a certain area mm -hmm. you have credibility you automatically influence people look at dr fauci whatever he's going to say because he's an expert in that area people will pay attention he has the credibility he, he will influence anybody who is an expert in certain area you can influence other people yeah i like that very much so. We are in an election year. You brought it up a little bit earlier about the candidates. You said something about the candidates. Yes. They've had a certain amount of time to be influential 
people ask them questions there on TV, d <laughs> trying to develop a rapport with a massive number of people, yes. and they are also to, uh, putting out information and the questions that they're asking of the people. They're trying to sell themselves on the benefits. To me, that this is all influential communication. All the steps are there. What do you think about that in terms of... I agree. I, I think politicians are masters mm -hmm. of communication, at least at the highest level. Mm -hmm. They're masters of it. They have coaches mm -hmm. that coach them on what to do, how to say it, mm -hmm. how to speak, speak clearly and concisely, right. how to speak definitively, typically how to... Uh, present engage, themselves, present yeah. themselves, dress a certain way, right. all the things that we teach and talk about, uh, they're, they're coached on and they, they do it well. And evidence of it is the millions of people that tune in, the millions of people to go vote, the fact that they were yep. elected or se selected to those various high positions. So it's absolutely <laughs> uh, influential communication, everything that they do. Yeah. What do you think? I would say not only just the politics, look at the influencers on Instagram, on Facebook, these people who influence you to buy certain products. You follow them blindly because the, the way they communicate, the way they say or they're dressed or the way they look, it's all of it. It's a total package right. from, from your physical self to how you speak and how you conduct yourself sure. and more so how you present. How you present yourself, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. And the, the storytelling in both yes. of those instances. Yes. You know, the they have a story, they have yeah. a narrative that they continue to repeat yeah. and people can identify with. This political season, we're seeing it maybe more than we have in, in the last several elections where people uh, are identifying with certain themes yes. <laughs> that maybe we haven't seen them uh, come out the woodworks yeah. like they have. <laughs> And so, uh, yeah, so it was definitely a big, big part of that. And even trying to be aligned with certain people who have had trauma in their family matters. They're aligning themselves up with them and supporting yeah. them, mentioning them and bringing them on television or pointing them out in the crowd. Just yeah. developing that relationship, being influential. Yeah. I'm sorry? They're bringing out the emotions. Yes, bringing out the emotions, of course, of mm -hmm. course. So final thoughts on influential communication. I believe it is a critical skill to learn to live a successful life if you want to be in control of your life. Whether it's parenting, whether it's work, whether it's play, really. Right. You don't want to be the guy on the court that never gets the ball. Right, yeah, <laughs> you know? sure, sure. Uh, in every area like of life, that. you being influential is critical for your success. Please. And I would say, used appropriately, you can change the world. That's powerful. Yeah. Yes, you can. Use probably you can change the world. Start with one person and branch all out to everyone else. Hey, folks, this is Grandison Shines. I want to thank you all again for watching this video on influential communication. Now, take what we've talked about here, the seven steps, and go and implement it out in the real world and try some things out and understand how this skill set really works. Of course, you can always give us a shout. We know that corporate, we've, dis we've done some trainings with corporations regarding influential communication for their leadership team, so we're always available to talk about that information around this video and how to get in contact with us. I'm Granison Shines, and I'm here again with... Yasmin Murray, thank you for watching us. Yes. And Al Gleason, Curator of Nonsense. All right, folks, thank you very much. We'll be back later on. Thanks. Bye.